To really know where we're headed, we need to unveil revolutionary ideas from leaders that are shaping the defense and business industries. Join me on these chats of the future with Redstone Gateway. I'm James Lomax, and this is Uncommon Access. Today, we're talking with Kyle Husband of Offbeat Coffee Studio about local coffee culture, the Offbeat brand, and how they continually adapt their model to best serve the Huntsville community. Kyle Husband, welcome to the program. Thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, absolutely. I knew I wanted to get you on Uncommon Access just because all the cool stuff you're doing in, in Huntsville and, and here at Redstone Gateway and uh, some of the challenges that were in the past year. But uh, first off, um, you're the, the owner and the operator of Offbeat Coffee Studio uh, with two locations. And uh, just tell tell the audience, you know, what's kind of the, the origin story behind Offbeat? Uh, so I would say the origin story behind Offbeat is, um, you know, my wife, Anna, used to actually, her parents, her, her, her mom actually used to have two coffee kiosks on base. Um, so she grew up in the coffee industry, working at those coffee shops from the time she was like 14 or so. And, uh, you know, when we met uh, five or six years ago, she was uh, she got back into the coffee industry, uh, working at another local coffee shop. And, you know, I just kind of uh, spent way too much time at that coffee shop, hanging out with her and fell in love with uh, coffee, with coffee culture. And, uh, you know, just decided that that was uh, something that I really wanted to be a part of. Absolutely. So you guys opened your first studio then at, at Campus 8 of 5. What was um, some of the thought process through that and, and how did you end up with um, the actual physical location you currently have now? Because I believe it has a, a, like a record store within the shop. Correct. Correct. So um, we came up with the idea to do a record store slash coffee shop. Uh, and, you know, we really wanted to concentrate on uh, the coffee side of that and uh, not just on the coffee, but on the quality of the coffee. So, you know, we strive to really serve some of the uh, best quality coffee that you can get in town. Uh, we wanted to uh, provide a space for people to be able to come and listen to music, uh, come and buy music, come and drink good coffee, come and have meetings, hang out, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So we just really wanted to uh, make the shop as inviting as possible and, you know, just uh, have a little bit of something for everybody there. So you, you hit on, you know, making the best coffee. You know, I think a lot of coffee shops say that you know so what is one of the things you think sets your coffee apart and what really makes good coffee i mean what can you explain that to some of the audience um well there's a lot of science that goes into the act of uh brewing coffee Mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people don't really realize that then like we we measure things down to you know the tenth of the hundredth of a gram with uh every cup of coffee that we serve so you know by doing that we're able to keep things super consistent we're able to really uh dial in the flavors that we want to get out of those beans and and have those flavors be consistently uh brought forward and experienced by our uh, customers Uh, another thing that i think sets us apart is our roaster Uh, we use onyx coffee lab out of northwest arkansas Mm -hmm. and they are a a uh, decently well-known, very highly decorated uh, roaster. They've won Small Roaster of the Year a few times. Uh, they've they're they're highly decorated, and they put out some of the coolest, uh, most unique coffees uh, that anyone's really putting out right now. Yeah, I, I mean, I've had it. I'm, I'm having it right now. I've had plenty of uh, meetings there and have enjoyed it. It's definitely not what you'd get out of like a Keurig, for instance. For sure, for you sure. Know? So I guess being in the coffee industry, do you kind of lament how the coffee? Uh, convenience factors come into people's lives on, you know, throwing in the Keurigs or the, you know, the easy to get coffee? Uh, I don't necessarily lament it. Uh, I would say, you know, it's it's a lot harder for me to go and drink those kind of, uh, you know, convenience yeah. uh, focused coffees now because, you know, I know what good coffee tastes like. Yeah. And to try to go and drink something out of a Keurig, it's uh it's not the the most pleasant experience, but um, you know everybody like everybody drinks coffee in, in their own kind of way. It's a very personal experience. If if someone likes to make their coffee at home in a Keurig, like I'm not going to knock them for that, but yeah. I would encourage them to come try some of my coffee and maybe uh, have a little bit different of experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you've got the record thing going on. You've got some excellent coffee, unique coffee, and then you do have some food options. Uh, yeah, we definitely have some food options. So at both shops, we offer a, a bagel-based food menu, and we actually get our bagels locally from Canadian Bacon Bread. Uh, they're a really cool bakery slash coffee shop in uh, downtown Huntsville. 
Um, so yeah, we have, you know, bagel sandwiches, sausage, egg and cheese, bacon, egg and cheese, smoked salmon bagels. Uh, we also serve a few pastries from good company cafe in South Huntsville. Uh, we've got muffins, uh, and cookies out here at our gate nine location at the Redstone gateway location. And then at the other location, we actually serve, uh, what they call drop biscuits, which are mm. kind of like a mix between a biscuit and a scone. Uh, but for our, for our, uh, Redstone gateway location, we wanted to make sure everything was really grab and go and mobile so people could be eating it on their way into work in the car so we stuck with the muffins for out here yeah so you hit on great point yeah so your location at um at 805 is kind of your traditional coffee shop you walk in you know great uh great atmosphere people can sit down at tables a little bit different concept here at redstone gateway still a great atmosphere obviously but you have the drive-through component you have a walk-up window you know what went behind um, adding that is is one of your shops, and how has it been um, thus far? Well, it's uh, it's been interesting. So it is a completely different uh, kind of model than what our uh, studio location at Campus 805 is. Uh, as you were saying, you know, that's a full-on cafe where people walk in, order, and uh, sit down and, and, and enjoy their coffee. Whereas out here, it is walk-up and drive-through only in a uh, you know a converted shipping container. So we're we're very small. Uh, it's a cool-looking building. We've got the drive-through. We've got the walk-up. We've got a little bit of a condensed menu, uh, just because we don't have quite as much room to be doing all of the crazy drinks and stuff that we do at our other location. Um, but, you know, that being said, I think it works a little bit better for our clientele out here who are mostly people that are going to work. Uh, that was a main consideration when we decided to come out here to the Redstone Gateway is the, the location is just so good. You know, being right outside of Gate 9, catching all of that traffic going into Gate 9, everybody going to work. Uh, you know, it, it's been it's been great. Uh, obviously, this past year it is, has uh, had some unforeseen challenges with, you know, uh, COVID and all of that. And obviously there aren't quite as many people at work currently as there were, say, you know, a year and a half ago or whatever. But uh, we are very optimistic with, uh, you know, the companies on the on the base slowly bringing people back. And, uh, you know, I have never operated out here. Um, I've always heard about this line that happens getting into gate nine. Uh, I've never actually operated out here and witnessed that. So I'm really looking forward to when uh, they call enough people back for that and, and to really, uh, you know, ramp up our uh, our sales there. Yeah, so what, you know, obviously you hit on some of the challenges. I mean, just less people generally coming out to get coffee. What What are some of the things that you at Offbeat did to adapt to COVID-19 back when you were in the midst of it last year? Um, well, we, I mean, we ended up cutting a lot of our staff in the very beginning. It was a really hard decision um, that in, in like March and April of 2020, uh, kind of furloughed them. We did end up bringing all of them back, but, uh, you know, it was, it was really hard there for a while. It was, it was just the ownership. Uh, me, my business partner, Drew and my wife, Anna were kind of the only ones running the shops at that time. And the gate nine location wasn't quite open at that point. So that was just the campus eight of five location. Uh, as far as adapting, you know, obviously we've done uh, a lot of, uh, uh, upgraded cleaning protocols. Uh, you know, we've, we've gone through so much hand sanitizer and, and soap. Yeah. It's absurd. Uh, obviously, uh, requiring everyone to wear masks. Um, all the things a, a lot of the other businesses have been doing, uh, you know, we have also been doing. Yeah, so do you think that, uh, and that Huntsville, maybe more so than other cities, was in a good position to weather COVID? Or or on the flip side of that, do you think Huntsville was in a in a worse position to weather COVID? Oh, uh, that's an interesting question. Yeah. I don't really know if I have an informed opinion about that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't really go to a whole lot of other cities during during in the middle of COVID. Uh, I would say that as as far as uh, most challenges, Huntsville does seem to weather them a little bit better than a lot of other places due to the influence of the defense industry and, and the arsenal itself. I think Huntsville's done a really good job. I think all the businesses in Huntsville have done a really good job. Um, it's been hard on everyone, and I'm glad we're coming out of it. Yeah, so I guess, you know, COVID's coming to an end. You know, I, I'm, I'm declaring that on this podcast right now, so that, that obviously means that it's, it's happening. But all, all things considered, you know, you're deep in the coffee business. I mean, you, you, you have a roaster, you, you serve unique coffees, you serve new flavors. So, um, you're, you're thoroughly in that business. What do you see the future of that industry? Are you involved in any industry, um, organizations or associations or that kind of thing? Um, that 
overall, I, I, I'm not really involved in any any organizations or anything uh, having to do with the industry. Uh, you know, locally, I do uh, like to try to be as involved with some of the my uh, the other local coffee shops as possible. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, me and the owner of Honest Coffee, uh, her name is Christy. We went back and forth a lot during COVID when we were all trying to adapt to these challenges and kind of figure out uh, how we were going to uh, operate in the middle of a pandemic. You know, we kind of compared notes a lot uh, and and kind of, uh, you know, made suggestions to each other and, and, and used each other as a sounding board. And, you know, that kind of uh, local uh, help has been has been great. And and, you know, uh, same with uh, Austin of Charlie Foster's Coffee over there in Stove House. You know, we uh, we tend to uh, go back and forth and, and, and trade ideas and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, the local people in the coffee industry uh, have really, I think, kind of banded together and, and helped each other out through all of these uh, the, the, this rough year of 2020. Yeah, because I guess at the end of the day, I mean, you are all competitors, but you all kind of have your unique factors. I mean, you you have that Campus 805 presence. Uh, you have the business, I'd say, presence here at, at Gate 9, Redstone Gateway. Um, and then they all have kind of unique locations as well. So while you do compete, I guess you can collaborate on some things. Definitely. And we're actually working on uh, us, uh, Honest and Charlie Foster's is actually working on uh, having a latte art throwdown. Uh, we haven't ironed out the details on that. It should be in the next couple of months. Uh, that's kind of just like a fun thing that some coffee shops do where they'll get the uh, community of baristas together and kind of have a contest and see who can pour the best latte art. Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a really fun thing. And, you know, we weren't able to do any of that in 2020. So it's really nice uh, kind of having uh, these other local uh, coffee uh, leaders uh doing that kind of stuff together. And, you know, the way I look at it is there's enough business in Huntsville. We don't have to, yeah. we, don't, we don't have to be going necessarily like head to head. We can help each other out. And in the coffee community, I think that uh, it's, it's important for us to help each other out and, and really uh, have each other's backs. Yeah. I think a lot of the people listening to this podcast are, they're interested in business. They're interested in entrepreneurship. Um, they're obviously interested in real estate. Um, do you see any other facets of the the coffee business that you have your eyes on? I mean, is there a big catering factor? Is that something completely separate? You know, things like that. So uh, one thing that we are kind of uh, in the process of pivoting to is going to be uh, roasting our own coffee. So there are a few roasters in town. Um, there aren't a whole lot of roasters in town, though. And, you know, I think that is a niche that... Uh, that, that could definitely be filled. And so we're actually in the process of uh, building out a little roastery and, and we're really going to start producing uh, more and more coffee over the next uh, several months and to, you know, a year or two. And uh, I think that's a, a really, uh, a really cool thing that, that we've got going for us that uh, not necessarily, you know, a lot of the other shops in town uh, do have going for them. So would that kind of be akin to um, owning a bar, but then distilling your own spirits? I I would say that that would be an accurate uh, representation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's completely interesting. So um, some fun questions for you, because just to keep it light, you know, have any celebrities ever visited any of your shops that you'd say? Uh, Celebrities. I don't think any celebrities. I'm trying to think if any celebrities have, I mean, the mayor. There is he a go. celebrity? Does he count? Is he regular? <laughs> he comes in from time to time, for Good. sure. For sure. Um, I can't think of any any necessarily uh, uh, big time national celebrities coming yeah. in though. Well, I think they're they're probably far and few in Huntsville as of right now. But as Huntsville grows, you know, who knows? Uh, for sure. You know, what are some things that um, you know? You've got this Gate Nine location. Is there any expansion opportunities that you see on the horizon for Offbeat Coffee? Is this something you want? You have a dream to build up, or do you want to be that local? Um, right now I, I want to keep it pretty local and, uh, you know, I want to concentrate a little bit more, like I was saying earlier on the roasting aspect of, of things. Uh, you know, I love having my, my retail shops, but I think that, uh, COVID has kind of, uh, made me realize and me, me and me and my other business partners at offbeat that, you know, I think that, uh, transitioning into the actual production of the coffee instead of just the brewing of the coffee might be a, uh, you know, a, a better move, a, a more sustainable move. 
So, uh, you know, that's kind of where I see us going in the uh, near term. You know, in the longer term, I could definitely see us uh, opening some similar shops at uh, other gates to the arsenal. I think that that, you know, this is proven to be a, a good location, a good business model. Uh, I could definitely see us trying to expand it and do a couple of more kind of uh, like what we've got going on right now. But, you know, there's no no solid plans for any of that or anything like that at this point. Gotcha. Excellent. Um, so just you yourself, I mean, you, obviously you, you love coffee, you love records, you know, what are some other hobbies that you personally have as, you know, outside of entrepreneurship? Um, you know, I love to travel and, uh, haven't been able to, to do a lot of that recently either. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, uh, getting, getting back into that and traveling with, uh, with my wife and daughter, uh, just had a daughter a few weeks ago. So, you know, getting her into traveling and, and getting her interested in other cultures and, and other parts of the world. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, other than that, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about coffee. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of time for just some, some, some crazy, uh, some crazy other hobbies. I like to play disc golf from time to time. Uh, but you know, other than that, it's, it's pretty coffee centric in, in my world. You do have the offbeat coffee label truck. I do. Tell I do. everybody about that. Uh, it hasn't. It's been out of action for a while now. I'm hoping to get it back in the next week or two. Uh, it's currently getting a new engine put in it. But yeah, it is a 1965 uh, Chevy C10 that we have uh, put the logos on the side of as kind of a uh, you know moving billboard to, uh, to to advertise for us. Yeah. And and it's a lot of fun to drive. It gets a lot of attention. Yeah. So that's that's a toy attention grabber. Um, you know, Huntsville seems to love the the food truck and the that kind of thing. Is there ever a plan to have an offbeat truck or trailer or something like that for events? Um, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, having a food truck, I, I know people that have food trucks. I know people that have had food trucks, and I mean, there's almost more that goes into having a food truck than there is into having a shop. Uh, you know, there's a there's a lot more. Uh, I mean, it's mobile. You've, you've got a you've got a plan. You've got to know where you're going, when you're going there, and all of that kind of stuff. And I just don't really see that as being something that I really want to get into. Honestly, yeah. I'll leave that up to the uh, to the professionals. Got it. <laughs> so you mentioned you have newborn baby. Yeah. At what age do you introduce her to offbeat coffee? Uh, that's a really good question. I would imagine that she is going to uh, not remember a time that she wasn't spending time in coffee shops because, you know, I spend a lot of time in coffee shops, whether it's mine, whether it's, uh, you know, our local competitors or whether it's out while uh, my family is traveling. You know, I like to see what other people have going on and uh, I always try to go to as many coffee shops as possible and I don't really see a way around her uh not knowing a lot about coffee from a very early age, you know, put a little coffee in the bottle. Every, yeah. Every <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to get her to sleep at this point. Yeah. So maybe not, maybe not. Right. I guess. So I did have a question that, that something you brought up and, and that was your collaboration with some other, um, cafes and, and bakeries in the area. So Canadian bacon and, uh, I believe good cafe is good that? company cafe, good yeah. company cafe. So what, created some of those collaborations and what went behind the decision making on those uh well you know as a local business i think it's important that uh i support other local businesses as much as possible and you know i could easily go to costco or whole foods and, and pick up pastries but uh there's nothing unique about that there's nothing anybody can do that and you know i think having some of these relationships with these other uh, bakeries and cafes and, and small businesses in town uh is very important to the small business industry as a whole especially in huntsville you know we we tend to try to collaborate with other small businesses as much as possible i mean we've done collaborations with uh goody vault which is a vintage clothing company we've done collaborations with dapper dude which is uh um, you know, a company that makes uh, high-end bow ties and, and dress apparel for men. We've done collaborations with uh, a few different uh, flower companies in town, uh, obviously with Good Company Cafe, with Canadian Bacon Bread for our bagels. Um, and, you know, we, we are always trying to reach out to other businesses to find ways to uh, collaborate and kind of uh, boost each other up. 
So what goes behind that? I mean, is it just a relationship that you had or you saw a product you liked and you went in there and said, we want to work with you? Uh, so it really just depends on the individual business. As far as what we serve in shop, uh, Good Company Cafe has some of the best pastries in town, in my opinion. Uh, so that was a more of a, uh, you know, we saw the product, we tasted Strategic. the product. Uh, we wanted to go carry that product in our shop. Um, m as far as... Uh, uh, Canadian bacon, you know, it, it's kind of the same thing, but we also had a, a personal relationship with uh, Daniela, one of the owners there. Uh, she actually did some interviews uh, with us on, uh, she is part of a No Huntsville. So we used to do some interviews and stuff with her. So that's kind of how we got that relationship going. Uh, as far as um, Manny from uh, Goody Vault and uh, Derek from Dapper Dude, they actually started coming into the coffee shop. Mm. And, you know, those relationships were, I think, uh, forged in Offbeat, uh, like in the actual cafe. Uh, they just kind of became regulars and, and started talking to us. And we thought that we could help each other out there. Absolutely. So how do you collaborate with a clothing brand, for instance? Um, what, what did some of those events look like? So they would come in and set up, uh, you know, racks of clothes and we would advertise it. They would advertise it. Uh, you know, we would have a special drink or something like that to help bring people in. And, you know, they would have some sort if they buy, you know, X amount of clothes and they get a free drink or, or, or whatever it may be. Uh, but but yeah, just kind of trying to drive uh, my clientele, my customers that may not know about uh, these clothing companies to these clothing companies and vice versa, having their clientele that may not know about Offbeat uh, coming into the shop to see them and, uh, you know, potentially buying some coffee and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned special drinks. So what, what goes into building a special drink, for instance? I mean, you have a lot of unique stuff, cereal, milk lattes, things like that. Who, who's the mastermind behind some of that, or is it a team effort? Uh, it's, a, it's a very much so a team effort. Um, so the cereal milk lattes, that kind of uh, came from me and my wife. We wanted that to be a permanent menu. That's just something kind of fun, you know, um, especially in the beginning. One of Offbeat's goals was to um, make craft coffee super high quality coffee a little bit more approachable to people that don't necessarily know a lot about uh, coffee or the coffee industry um, you know we wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, coming off as being like snooty or anything like that and we thought things like a cereal milk latte is kind of nostalgic it's something that not a lot of people have tried and it's kind of a, a, a gateway to get people uh, to come in and try our coffee that that maybe wouldn't uh, otherwise but you know we also put on uh, seasonal menu and our seasonal menus are usually created by our baristas. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, our baristas will come up with drinks. Everyone will try them and uh, kind of vote on what ends up getting put on the menu. Uh, for instance, right now, uh, one of my favorite seasonals that we just came out with, uh, this one is actually only available at the studio location, uh, is a raspberry milk sweetened uh, whipped matcha drink i don't even know like <laughs> i'm not sure what half that is it's it sounds it's, good. it's purple it's green it's yeah. got pistachios on top it's sweet it's tart uh it's awesome and you know that's something that i don't think i personally would have ever come up with but um you know one of my very talented baristas uh came up with it and and it's wonderful you know we've also got a lemon poppy seed latte that's going to be going on at this location awesome. out here at uh redstone gateway soon uh yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of a lot of fun stuff going on, and, and like I was saying, you know, I owe that a lot of that to my employees, my baristas, uh, and their creativity. What's the flexibility like? So, if a customer comes in and wants something that maybe isn't on the menu, is there a secret offbeat menu or? Uh, no, there's not a secret offbeat menu. But I mean, you would be surprised how many people do come in and they don't really know what they want. Um, you know, I try to train. Uh, my baristas to be able to help in that instance, you know, kind of uh, feel them out. Do you like sweet? Do you like the taste of coffee? You know, go kind of go from there. If they like sweet, like let's, let's steer them in the direction of one of our flavored lattes. You know, if they come in and they're a, the, all they know is the Starbucks menu and they want a caramel macchiato, uh, you know, one of our caramel lattes is basically the same thing as a Starbucks caramel macchiato. So we'll steer them in that direction. So, you know, we, we, we like talking to people that, that don't know a whole lot. I love educating my clientele and, and my customers and, uh, you know, helping them find a drink on our menu that they will end up uh, enjoying as much as some of the stuff they are more familiar with. Very cool. So, Kyle, have you, has your company gone into some other companies and, and offered pop-up events or, you know, come 
get a latte or, or see how lattes are made kind of event in like say a big defense contractor uh so we we haven't necessarily done it with any big defense contractors but you know we would love to start doing it with some big defense contractors um we you know we do offer some services where we will come in uh at, at your event or your party or, or whatever it is and set up an espresso machine and make lattes and cappuccinos and, and things like that uh serve iced coffees really have a limited menu but kind of whatever whatever the uh whatever the client wants uh we we can definitely do that kind of stuff and i really enjoy doing that kind of stuff because that kind of goes back to what i was talking about earlier you know kind of educating uh you know the the uh the the greater huntsville, greater huntsville area on kind of what we have to offer um and you know some of the higher quality offerings that uh that we have so with that, any plans to ever do like coffee classes or anything like that? So yeah, definitely. Um, we actually used to do coffee classes uh, before uh, COVID, and we've gotten away from that obviously because you know gatherings and all of that. But now that we're starting to be able to have some more gatherings and stuff, we definitely want to ramp that back up. And um, you know, we've done pour over classes in the past. Those have pour over is a brewing method where you actually physically pour the water over the grounds out of a kettle. Uh, it gives you a lot of control control over the the cup of coffee we've done um we've done classes with that i would love to do some espresso classes uh you know one of one of offbeat's uh goals is to educate our our clients our, our customers and uh really uh you know teach people about coffee and so those classes are, are an important part of that and I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to to getting back into that so that said what what's the funniest espresso art you've ever seen latte art um the funniest uh i don't know about the funniest but i actually do one of my baristas actually made this yesterday and uh i thought it was really cool uh it is a rabbit that's good so yeah, pr- we'll pretty, have to uh, pretty cool stuff we'll have to get that image and put it put it here to share with the audience that's uh, awesome. but but yeah you know uh, as far as, as latte art like uh I don't, I don't know if funny is is the right word but um but you know there's a lot that goes into that too i would love to have some classes on that uh people are very interested in like how do you do that how do you yeah. pour the the milk i'm like I'm, I'm just pouring milk in a cup like I'm, i don't know <laughs> but yeah I, w- I would love to uh, do some classes about that and really just anything that the general public wants to know i would yeah. i would love to be teaching uh classes on that Good stuff. Well, is there anything that you want to say to the people that are listening to Uncommon Access about your brand or? Uh, I mean, I think we've covered a lot of it, you know, um, go out there and, and seek out good coffee, whether it's from Offbeat or some of our other shops in town. There's a lot of good coffee in Huntsville and, you know, uh, go check it out. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Kyle. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Uncommon Access. Our podcast is produced by Redstone Gateway, where the future works. You can find Uncommon Access on major podcast platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, as well as on YouTube. You can find out more about Uncommon Access on redstonegateway.com slash podcast. Special thanks to our recording location, the Rocket City Tavern. We'll see you soon for another chat of the future. Uncommon Access is recorded on location at Rocket City Tavern. The tavern is conveniently located outside Gate 9 at Redstone Gateway and serves up delicious food with an unbeatable atmosphere. Rocket City Tavern is where history and people meet for great food and drinks.